which one? Every week, we invite passionate collectors to come into the studio and take us through their collections. And tonight, it's Matthew Lynch. Now, Matthew's particular passion is those 70s glam rock gods, Kiss. And Matthew, when exactly was the last time you put on the makeup? When I was younger, my brother actually did my face up as Ace Frehley, but we didn't have any black eyeliner, so we used a black uh, permanent marker texture. <laughs> And it took about three days for it to come off, so yeah, exactly. school wasn't too pleased. <laughs> OK, before we give away all your embarrassing Kiss stories, we'd better take a look at the collection. I collect Kiss because they're the band that influenced me so much as a child. You go to a Kiss concert and you never forget it. I first started collecting KISS when I was about nine years old. I mean, there's just so much out there from games, uh, toys, lunch boxes. Well, the sky's the limit. The hardest band in the world, KISS! When KISS arrived in Australia in 1980, it was just absolutely huge. And this was the program you would have bought if you're in Melbourne, say, at Waverley Park. You can see the Icy Pole advertisement. This is an example of how hard Kiss hit the merchandising and captured everyone's imagination. And I actually have an Icy Pole wrapper over here. If you look, you can see the torn bit on the side where the Icy Pole was removed and there's a picture of Eric Cart and Paul Stanley. We also have the radio from 1977. And this is a great little piece, one of my favourites. If you turn it on, you can see it still works. All right, that's music for my ears. One of my luckiest finds was my wife's auntie found a box of Kiss memorabilia in a second hand shop. Uh, in that box uh, there was this mirror, there was a Kiss diary, you know, so that was probably the one thing I really got a kick out of. Kiss had glam rock down to a fine art. In 1978 they released this makeup kit. It was an oil based formula and when it got on children's clothes a lot of parents found this a bit hard to wash out so they released a water-based formula in the same year and when it's fancy dress at school these kids know who they're going as this is one of my favorite items from 1977 it's the metal lunchbox and thermos flask that's very sought after but probably over the last few years it's just really snowballed or you could say got out of control and um, yeah, I'm just going crazy at the moment, collecting whatever I can get my hands on. And Gordon, this is just a huge area of collecting, isn't it? Some of the prices, Andy, I just get blown away. There was a Shea Stadium Beatles mm. poster sold recently, $175,000. Mm. And a kiss out, a full kiss out, for, sold for about the same kind of price. Oh, look, they had a very smart manager. His name was Bill O'Coin, and he, uh, took them on from their early days and really marketed them, them well. Yeah. Coined by name, yeah. coined by, by nature. nature. Yeah. And, yes. uh, and here we have this, uh, this, this incredible thing. There's a few people, Elvis was one, I think. Elvis was yeah. one, yes. Um, who've, who've had their uh, photo or their image on legal tender on American $1 bill, and, and here's Kiss on, on this one. What period do you like to collect from, Matthew? Do you have a preference? Yeah, I really only collect vintage, which is about 73 to probably 82, 83. The stuff I buy was originally uh, designed for kids. Kids opened things, they ripped boxes open, they played with the toys, they broke them, mothers threw them out, all those sort of things, so that's what makes them so rare. Kiss were doing all the merchandise and everything, the same as other bands were, but they kind of took it another step further. Tell us about the comic book. Kiss being Kiss and knowing how to, you know, really maximise everything they did, come up with an idea of uh, taking blood from their arms and putting it into the red ink, and that red ink was then uh, used to make all those comics, and it says on the bottom of the comic that it was printed in real Kiss blood. Matthew, you've got such a broad range of materials to try to look after. This uh, dollar note is actually in a, a sleeve of Mylar, which is a fantastic product for keeping paper-based um, objects in. Um, but what you could do is back it with acid-free card okay, and yep. mm -hmm. keep it in uh, polypropylene is the yep. best thing. Okay. So are you constantly looking for new stuff to collect? Oh, always. I mean, look, I still haven't got a pinball machine and that's probably Sounds more to do with cool. the fact the lack of room. We'll have to come back and see when you get it. Yeah. Well, that's right. <laughs> we'll have to have a game, maybe. Yes. <laughs>
Now, remember